Hey there, all you gearheads and trail tamers. Today, we're diving into the world of the RockShock Vivid Ultimate. The shock is cooler, bigger, and bolder than before. Big fat air shock buddy that's here to party. Let's talk measurements. The Vivid Ultimate size, it's a whopping 34 millimeters. It's like the LeBron James of shock shafts. Meanwhile, Fox Float X2 is looking like an underestimated underdog. Size isn't everything, right? A little prep goes a long way on suspension. Let's rip that air can off and see what's inside. Removing the air can is like performing a magic trick. But instead of pulling a rabbit out of a hat, you're dealing with air can foreskin, a delicate dance of tools and DIY prowess that results in a moment of triumph. Like most RockShock products, it's very user friendly with instructions inside of the can for maximum spacers and where to put them. My shock is a 230 by 65 millimeters. I have absolutely no experience with this, so I'm gonna put 50% spacers. My voiceover is hindsight, so looking back in time, you Use more spacers and air than you think because this shock does not have a lot of compression damping. It's a little bit hard to pull the air canister down, but going back together is very easy. My Vivid has two DU bushings installed. Unfortunately, my bike is a special cookie. And like most of my bike repair adventures, I think about 45 minutes, four and a half hours later, I'm lucky to get it done. Quick trip to the bike store to get those bushings pressed out, have the idiot cash register gouge my stanchion on a brand new shock, but don't worry, the surprises get even better. I'm installing Fox hardware on this shock because it's like James Bond. He sneaks into any shock and does an amazing job. All right, let's go put LeBron James on the bike. Absolutely vital you have the air valve not contacting the frame here. Don't ask me why I know this. I got the shock bolted into the bike, just a little bit of air. Put a piece of paper around the shock to make sure it's not gonna hit the frame because it's a really tight fit on this bike. Absolute nail biter every time I put a new shock on this bike. Looks like I fucked the canister up on the first cycle of the shock. Don't worry, it's not the first shock I've ruined on this bike and it won't be the last. Cycling the shock about 85 times, I don't feel any real resistance, so it's just a little scuff on the frame. Make sure you're aware of your bike's clearances before you install or buy one of these. Most large volume air cans require you to cycle the suspension every 50 PSI as you put air inside. Don't worry when you fuck it up like I did, it will equalize both chambers and will make a beautiful little hissing noise. First ride on the trail with the RockShock Vivid. It feels like any large volume air canister, no different, no better, no worse. Let's test this climbing switch out and see what it does. Very innovative, it only closes about 50% of the compression circuit, so it's actually very useful. If you were gonna ride some huck to flats, you could turn that on and it basically just adds some extra compression and it helps the shock not bob when climbing. First downhill section on the Vivid, always a nail biter. Not sure if it's gonna blow through my frame or not. After the first downhill, I realized this RockShock Vivid is not a super deluxe. It's not set it in the parking lot one time and forget about the brick under your bike for the next five years it's gonna take some tuning. After running this same section of trail about six times, I ended up with the rebound in the dead slow position. I wish I would have just started in the slowest position and then slowly cranked it up. There's only four clicks on the blue knob, that's the compression. After going through this trail with a couple of bigger hits, I found that thing best turned all the way to maximum with the hydraulic bottom out cranked up all the way. Moving down to my favorite section of trail, RockShock Redemption, a triumph for heavyweights. So remember those days when RockShock and heavyweight riders were distant relatives? who only met at family reunions, well, it's time to throw that idea out the window. 
because the Vivid Ultimate is here to bridge the gap with very heavy riders and very light riders with an extremely wide range in rebound that all riders can get along with, including my special cookie self. I want you to listen to the sound effect that the hydraulic bottom out makes when you clap it. I was very impressed with the rebound, but the compression, the mid stroke support was not impressive. For the rest of the trail, it felt like I was just blowing through the shock. I'm running maxed out compression, 300 PSI, and it's just not giving me that plush supported feeling I'm used to. So later that day, it had me thinking, it's not a fox. I need to stop treating it like a fox. So I had an epiphany. The next day, I was gonna go to the bike park with a lot more pressure in the shock. The next day, I put 330 PSI almost maxed out. This shock can take 340 PSI maximum. That was like 22% sag. Headed into this bike park jumps, I was thoroughly impressed by the mid-stroke support, the predictability, and the all-around performance of this shock is absolutely amazing with a lower sag number. Here's a very simple explanation of the RockShock Vivid. It's like an $80 steak that 85% of the population will be able to set up and cook. The air spring and the tokens provide the support in the stroke. It's much easier for people to tune. The RockShock Vivid is also very, very user friendly. No tools required for all the adjustments. Comparing the RockShock Vivid to the Fox Float X2, the X2 is like a $100 steak that's a little bit more tricky to cook or set up.